Okay, so it says we're live. I'll have to check. Marie, test, test. Okay, so we are live. Um, hello, everyone. Welcome to the Roundup. It's a new weekly show by Mina Bytes and uh, Digital Digest, where we will highlight uh, the biggest stories every week from uh, the startup and technology ecosystems of the Middle East, North Africa, Turkey, and Pakistan. Uh, we'll, we'll, we have a lot to talk about today. Uh, my name is Zubair. I uh, run Mina Bytes. And I have with me Rasha, who has been running Digital Digest, uh, a news aggregator for startups and technology in the Middle East and North Africa. Uh, she's been in the ecosystem for quite some time. Rasha, if you can quickly introduce yourself, and then we'll uh, move to the, the stories that have been making headlines. Yes. Uh, hi, it's great to be here, and I'm really excited for this new project. Uh, my name is Rasha. I've been, for the past year, running the Digital Digest and growing it slowly. Uh, Digital Digest is an aggregator, as Zubair said. Um, that aggregates news on the tech ecosystem and digital business in the Middle East. Uh, previous to that, I used to work at Paco Capital for a year, and before that, really been part of the ArabNet team for a very long time, and just give them a big shout out uh, from here for all the hard work that they've been doing. Um, I think you know there's a lot of news to get into, so just get into it. Right. So we're actually starting it at uh, an unfortunate time. Um, yesterday was a really uh, sad day for a lot of people in yeah. the in the region. For a lot of those who are involved in the uh, technology space in the region, uh, we're starting our uh, show with the biggest story of of yesterday. Uh, Kareem laying off 31 percent of its uh, workforce. They made the announcement yesterday. Uh, Mudassir Sheikha, company CEO, had a call with uh, their employees first, and then uh they uh they, they published a blog and uh shared all the details of of the layoffs uh, this was expected there's uh absolute i mean it may have come as a shock to those who who, who have been affected by it but uh everybody had been speaking about it uh the business of kareem has been both uber and kareem has been down uh with ride hailing you know almost on pause all across the region uh, but one thing that we should not forget here is that Kareem ha has let, let off uh, about 150 people earlier this year too. And that is very important, you know, uh, think, take it to consideration. Uh, Kareem would have let off some of these people, uh, the 536 that they have let off uh, yesterday. Uh, I, I think, and this is, you know, a lot of people, uh, what a lot of people are saying that they would have uh, let off some of these people anyway. Uh, but now because of COVID, obviously, you know, uh, everything has accelerated. They have to, you know, cut down uh, their costs and, uh, you know, extend, uh, the, yeah, extend, extend the, the, the cash that they have for, for a longer period of time. And obviously, you know, uh, as Mudassir mentioned in, in, uh, in, uh, in the, in the blog that he shared in the note that he shared with, uh, with Kareem's employees, they have they have no idea how long this is going to take. Uh, they have no idea about you know the the timeline of uh, recovery. So even though it is uh, very difficult, uh, you know, for those employees, but I'm sure uh, many of them are going to create you know their own companies. We're already seeing a lot of Kareem employees, uh, former Kareem employees, uh, building some some great products, some uh, some really good companies in the region. So hopefully that would be the case with uh, these these new layoffs too, and uh, hopefully they will, when when they go and join, I mean join or build their own companies. I think uh, uh, they will they will end up you know adding a lot of value to the ecosystem in 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 one way or the other. I think it's also important to note that it. I mean, your Kareem or whoever you are, if you're well funded, you have been. Uh, hiring based on the fact that you're going to fundraise soon and that based on trajectory numbers that are just not realistic at this stage. Uh, we've seen uh, massive layoffs in the U.S. as well, uh, obviously from a lot of um, super well-funded companies, but also uh, the news about Kitoki firing part of its staff, the yeah. modest thing down. 
it is not an easy time to be a big business right now. Um, and we see this in traditional sector as well. I think the interesting uh, repercussion of this is every single day it proves that there is really, this is the great time to start a new business. There's a lot of talent that is being let go from these companies. So listen, if you're, if you're up to starting a new business, this is a great time to do it. Um, and you can get some great talent that's been trained in great startups. Um, and, you know, hopefully best of luck for all the employees that have been let go and their ability uh, to uh, I think it's a, it's a very important point. I, I also, you know, keep hearing uh, a lot of people have been saying this, that it is uh, a great time, you know, to build digital products and uh, build the, these companies. Uh, one thing that, you know, uh, anyone who's starting a company uh, in these times uh, should should consider. And, you know, even, even those who start them um, like six months down the line or one year down the line is that you should try to bootstrap for as long as possible keep the burn as little as possible because you know uh, the those good times are gone i mean call call them good times or whatever you're not going to get a lot of money with very little accountability in the future uh, those days are i mean over so i think this is something that that anyone who's starting a company should should definitely consider and uh, with this news we we have you know uh, an extension of uh, Kareem's announcement also includes uh, uh, Kareem Bus actually, you know, killing its uh, service completely. They're, they're, they're shutting it down. And uh, uh, again, there were not a lot of details about why they're doing it. Uh, but uh, what Mutasir Sheikha has said that they've, they've had to reassess all the uh, new verticals that they were expanding into. and. Uh, even though the unit economics of uh, mass uh, transportation have improved, but they do not really make sense at the moment for them. And I think it's also uh, the idea is to think of cutting your competitive losses. So today, um, you know, the, the players in that space like Swivel and um, other, other players in that space are already struggling and this is their core business. Um, and I think, you know, they, they will come out of this hopefully and, and things will progress. We will always need some form of transportation and increasingly this is evident that we need less pollution in the world. We're seeing how clean the cities are these days. It's amazing. Um, yeah, it is. And, and I think this is going to continue to be a case scenario. Uh, but I think it's about if you're a business today and you're trying to compete on a peripheral sector to your business, maybe it's a good time to re double down and focus on your core business instead of spreading yourself too thin. Because I can imagine this is not something that they're making money on yet. Of, of course, we're, we're speculating, but it's definitely a fringe business in some market. It's not the core business yet. Um, so it makes sense, you know, cut your losses. Yeah, absolutely. And I think recovery for something like Kareem Bus or Swivel or Airlift, it, it's going to be... Uh, different than the recovery of ride hailing in general because you know people might use uh, a, a cab at the end of the day they, they they might you know feel comfortable with it again in uh, the next uh, few weeks when you know things when the dust uh, settle downs but sharing a bus with like 13 or 14 people inside it i think you know we'll we'll have to give it some time before people go back to uh, go back to that but yeah let's uh let's see how that evolves mass transport i'm i mean i'm leaving it up to the world to tell us yeah. uh the next thing i think leading from that into the second part which is you know cutting your losses uh uber's decided and i think this is a very interesting news uber globally says uber eats is crouching to becoming its most profitable business and uh, or most revenue generating business and increasingly constituting a big part of this revenue globally. Uh, but it did decide to shut down its Uber Eats services in eight different cities around the world. Um, I mean, initial news was by June 4th, but the emails that are being sent to consumers uh, tell a different story. So the emails that were sent to Saudi consumers said May 4th, which was yesterday. Uh, it, was, it was literally an immediate shutdown and transferring all that business to Kareem now. Yeah. Um, 
which in one way I think is a great boost for Kareem, Uber being the mother company right now, that could be um, kind of a consorted effort to uh, cut losses in, on one side and consolidate business on one side so that they can increase their their unit costs or their unit, the their revenues they're generating per, per, per um, delivery transaction, et cetera. Um, you know, why compete against yourself in a in a struggling world i think that that time as you mentioned is long gone um what's interesting about this uber e transition into kareem now is um everyone is doing delivery right now everyone that didn't do grocery specifically groceries uh so we just saw noon launched daily um kitopi launched shop kitopi these are both services that have been launched only in the uae for now um, Talabat has grocery deliveries now, um, and so it's it's really a difficult kind of. If I want to order groceries, I'm in Dubai right now. If I want to order groceries, I have like 10, 12 apps of options on my phone that I could do that through. Um, frankly, it's a little. Oh, how uh, good are they? <laughs> so I think the reason Kitopi didn't do a big announcement or noon immediately was they're still trying to ramp up their inventory. Uh, their inventory, their the inventories overall are a little. At least where I live, they're not they're not big, so I still can't get all my groceries in one app. Um, for multiple reasons, whether it's Carrefour or Noon or Insta Shop or Union Co-op or whatever, like the hundreds of options we have right now, you, because. The, the surge of demand for e-commerce today caused the clash of reality, which I don't think e-commerce was ever ready to be ramped up into this world, uh, where the, your, your warehouse inventory is not where your e-commerce is coming from. It's not even enough because your warehouse inventory can barely make it into the shelves and to e-commerce at the same time with the same level of demand. So this is like the... It, it's really difficult for everybody. I, I totally understand. But from a consumer perspective, it feels like I'm doing e-commerce quite a few years ago. And I've been doing my groceries online for a few years now. This is quite a reverse in time. <laughs> um, it, it's gotten to the point where yeah, I, I yeah, prefer to go to the supermarket because it's just so much less hassle. Um, but we'll see how things develop. Yeah, and and one thing, uh, one thing I you know could not understand about uh, Kareem uh, Uber Eats uh, exit from these markets is, so Kareem now is operating in both Saudi and and UAE. Uh, yeah. But in their announcement, uh, Uber has said that they are transferring the business to Kareem now in in UAE, but they haven't said anything uh, of that sort for Saudi. They are exiting Saudi. I don't really understand when you have your subsidiary operating a similar business over there, why you would not, you know, uh, transfer the business to them. I mean, the only reason I could think of is that, you know, maybe Kareem is also planning to exit food delivery uh, space for, from, from Saudi. I, I cannot really think of anything else. Or maybe, you know, uh, the business is, is, is too small. But uh, yeah, that, that's one strange thing that, you know, uh, for, at least for me, in 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 the in the announcement and the filing, it could be an oversight, or it could be that. Uh, and I mean, we don't have transparent statistics on the market. Uh, it, I'm sure Kitopi, being um, the the cloud kitchen for a lot, for so many of these guys, could probably give us more insights on this on on percentage of the market. I'm not sure that people would disclose though. But it, it's really about market share. If if um, or an oversight, it could be that they're transferring business to Kareem now. But if the market share was too small, we go back to the theory of let's cut losses. Yeah. Um, and Saudi is super competitive in the food delivery space with apps, you know, like Jahez and really, there's just so many local apps that are super aggressive. Um, Ooh, yeah. So I, I will wait and see. I'm sure in the next couple of days we will have more clarity on how all these things happen. Like this literally broke yesterday. So it feels like uh, the yeah. breaking news of we're still figuring things out. Yeah. Uh, I mean, 
good that you mentioned you know uh, uh, all these apps being present in saudi you know one thing uh, consistent about saudi has been you know delivery hero being number one over there through hunger station i mean in spite of everything that has you know happened over there they've, they've still they're still maintaining the lead that's you know that's that's amazing i they're they're not you know giving it away and uh, that's 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 really good uh, moving on to the next one uh, Instabug yesterday announced a $5 million Series A led by Excel. Uh, now, Instabug uh, has been in the software uh, business for quite some time. It is one of the most admired software startups, if, if, if that's the word that I could use uh, in the region. They are uh, uh, they're, they're known for having a really good uh, work culture. Uh, they're known for building you know, great products from Egypt. And uh, I think this this new round uh, should actually, you know, encourage more people uh, from the region, especially from markets like Egypt and Jordan, to work on software startups and you know sell their products, sell these services in in the in the U.S. Because um, I'm a, I mean we don't know, but I think a lot of engineering talent will also become available as you know we we move forward. Uh, a lot of companies unfortunately we'll have to you know shut down if they're unable to you know make it uh if the, if the burn is high and all and you know we'll, we'll see a lot of engineering talent uh getting let uh, let off and i think it, it would be a good time for for them as you mentioned uh rasha earlier uh it's perhaps uh, a great time to build you know your own products your own uh, companies even if you're starting it as a side gig i think uh it's really important uh about instabug i think uh uh so they, they started with uh, a simple um, bug reporting uh, software yep. uh, for developers and uh, they've now transformed, they've now evolved to become, you know, uh, to offer uh, contextual insights uh, throughout the mobile app uh, life cycle. Uh, and uh, uh, even though they have, you know, they've been competing with uh, international players uh, sitting in Silicon Valley, they've uh, They've sort of um, maintained their lead. They are one of the best uh, in this business, and uh, it's really good to see them, you know, raising this uh, new round of money, especially in these times. Uh, th this is very critical. Uh, Omar, uh, the CEO of Instabug, actually in in the announcement said that you know they they started the fundraising uh, after COVID nineteen, and they were still able to close the round uh, really quickly. So that's that's really something. It's also good to see, you know uh capital still flowing in uh in in, in markets like uh egypt even though you know interbug is not headquartered in egypt anymore but that's more of a positioning thing uh, most of their staff is still working from their uh cairo office so yeah that's 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 good to see yeah i think it's interesting about interbug is one you know shout out to the team congratulations uh, you know we're, i've been a fan of their work for a very long time even when it was a simple bug reporting software it was always amazing uh, to see them, their features added on and on to different platforms across the world. Um, I think there's a lot of similar businesses in the region that have relocated to the Silicon Valley or San Francisco or other places in the US um, to expand their growth opportunities and their access to certain types of talent, but also certain types of investors. Uh, and I think this is the perfect time for the SaaS ecosystem to, to grow because this is the proof of concept for your business model. Your, the, the 10x, 12x model that the Voltech ecosystem was built on really was inspired by this SaaS revolution that took over the world. And for some reason, we started applying it to everything, um, to all non-SaaS businesses as well. But this is the kind of core feature and core business that we see bits and pieces of it around the region right now. And hopefully these guys will be able, and, and I've been hearing stories in the in the grapevines of some phenomenal growth with some businesses due to COVID-19, mostly in the SaaS business, excluding the stuff related to delivery uh, that have been seeing great traction, which is amazing. This is your time to shine. Congratulations on the round. And I guess this also, you know, kind of, leads us into other rounds that have been happening around the region, which is um, Yellow Compare just trades a very similar round, uh, $4.25 million from Gulf Insurance Group in Kuwait. Uh, similar thing, it is an online solution. Um, 
more on the insurance space, which I guess is having um, a bit of a, a time right now for insurance. People are, are buying insurance, they're looking for good insurance, uh, they're reevaluating their insurance options. Uh, so, um, you know, in, in the GCC specifically, insurance is a big market. Uh, and for businesses as well. In times like these, a lot of people are starting to read the fine print of, you know, what does my insurance policy cover? Does a pandemic count as a force majeure or not? Um, and, and I guess it's, it's very, and especially healthcare, because we increasingly see that healthcare is a big part of this, um, of our lives. Um, so congratulations to the team on Yellow, uh, Yellow Compare. This is a big move for traditional player to invest in these businesses as well. Um, and I think we're gonna see a bit more of that where the traditional businesses that could have been LPs are um, evaluating their options and saying, I'm probably gonna need to invest more in tech, whether through funds or directly through businesses or tra actually performing business transformation to my operations. Um, after we yeah, that word has been abused widely in the in the region. Yeah, I don't know where all that money went for the past seven years, but you know, uh, and and I'm not saying this about Gulf Insurance Group, of course. I mean, this is a blanket statement to some people yeah. have done fantastic, and you can see from their reaction and the ability and their agility towards COVID-19 reactions. Um, ironically, we see this a lot with the Saudi and the UAE governments, and even the Bahrain governments, which have been super agile. Um, and you know, not not so applicable to the private sector, unfortunately. Um, so I think this is a very strategic move, and we're going to see more of this moving forward, hopefully, as more people realize that technology is not um, a fringe option. It's it's not an add-on. It's it's really a necessity in the future. Absolutely. I think, I mean, anyone, any company, uh, all these big players in the region, uh, traditional big players uh, who did not, uh, you know, buy this argument uh, are, are actually running after, you know, startups to technology startups and uh, different types of players to help them uh, go online uh, as soon as possible. I mean, uh, we can probably talk about Al Shaya in in the next one. Uh, how they have, you know, taken this forward because you know they've they've come up with something uh, completely uh, strange, uh, asking people to order uh, through WhatsApp using uh, some PDFs and all. But uh, maybe we can talk about that, you know, in the next one. Uh, today, the last story that we have is about uh, emerging markets uh, property group uh, EMPG. Uh, owner of uh, the parent company of uh, Buyut and uh, Zameen, Zameen.com in, in, in Pakistan. They've become a unicorn with a $150 million investment from OLX. And uh, EMPG was founded in, in, 20, in 2006 by, um, it started as Zameen in, in Pakistan, then they moved to UAE. I think they launched in UAE uh, uh, a few months after launching in in, uh, in Pakistan, and uh, the platform was founded by two uh, Pakistani British Pakistani brothers, and you know they, they, their rise has been very quiet. They uh, you know you you you've not really you you haven't seen them uh, a lot in the in the media, but you know they've they've, they've quietly become the the second unicorn of uh, of the region and. Uh, what has happened is, as a result of the deal, uh, the OLX business in in Saudi, e Egypt, uh, Lebanon, sorry, in Egypt, Lebanon, Pakistan, and there was one more market, perhaps UAE. I, I don't recall. Has been has been given to uh, EMPG. Uh, they'll be managing it, and uh, uh, yeah, uh, OLX. Bouab in Morocco, Bouab, I think. Yeah, uh, they're, so they're operating different portals uh, across the region. Uh, Mubawab, I think, if, if I'm yeah. pronouncing it right, is also one of them. But uh, 
what I did not understand from the uh, announcement, uh, and, I've, and I've actually asked them about this too, I, I haven't really received uh, feedback on this, is that, so they say that uh, OLX is actually giving its business to uh, EMPG in, in, in these four markets, which are uh, Egypt, Lebanon, UAE, and Pakistan. Uh, in, in UAE, it's obviously the Bizzle, but they also say that EMPG will be managing uh, OLX in Saudi, Qatar, and a uh, few other countries in the GCC. Now, they have not clarified in the announcement, there are no details in the announcement, whether these markets have also been given completely. Ha have they been acquired by EMPG, or is this more of uh, them managing the, the businesses over there on a revenue share or whatever? But uh, uh, whatever, you know, whatever the case may be, this is a really big news for the region. Uh, they've, they've become a unicorn in, in, in these times, and uh, uh, it has taken them uh, 14 years. And one thing that I've taken away from uh, from EMPG's rise is that this is also a company that has scaled all across the region. So if you yeah. want to become, if you want to build a billion dollar company out of the Middle East and North Africa, you have to go and scale across the region. Kareem did it this way. EMPG has been able to do it this way. You cannot expect, it would be very difficult to build a unicorn out of a single market because the region is, uh, you know, very fragmented and you have these small markets all across the region. So if you're building something, you know, that uh, for, for consumers, you have to take into, you know, uh, consideration the fact that you are building for the entire region, not just for one specific market. Maybe. If, if we end up seeing a, a software unicorn from the region, uh, which could be uniphonic, uh, I think that 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 would be a little different. But uh, I mean, if, if it is something like Kareem or EMPG, they have the, the idea should be scaling across the region and scaling as quickly as possible. Yeah, the addressable market has to be big enough to justify the valuation. And I think in the case of SaaS businesses, um, they're able to expand to global consumers um, it, easier and cheaper, uh, similar to what Instabug did. So they can they can be anywhere in the world and service any developer anywhere in the world. Your decision on Office would really be more related to your internal structure and your access rather than where your client is because, you know, it's all online. Uh, and I think you're a SaaS business, you have that advantage. But if, if you're dealing with physical real life, uh, your your addressable market needs to be um, clear, and we've seen this with OLX, uh, with Dubizzle, when they first raised from Naspers, uh, and obviously OLX is owned by Naspers. Yeah. Uh, so when Naspers first invested in Dubizzle at the time, Dubizzle did a massive uh, expansion in the region and tried to operate it like a SaaS business without having local presence, and then they had to downscale. And I think. The, the, I think there's a lot to learn from people that make these very bold moves. And I, it could be that EMPD actually learned from that and decided to take a slow and steady approach and invest in and then acquire the dominant players in these markets or fund and create dominant players in local markets that operate uh, locally but collectively as a region. Um, and, and I think it's, it's uh, classifies as a very interesting space for a lot of people. It's, um, you know, it's, it, the model is, is very unique. You really need the mass numbers. And I'd be really curious to see how NASPERS will treat the OLX EMPG entities because they're very notorious for kind of merging entities. So they, don't, they definitely wouldn't do it immediately. They didn't do it immediately with OLX and Dubizzle. We still have Dubizzle as a standalone entity in Dubai, but in yeah. all the other markets um, that it did operate in and OLX did acquire the business, eventually it did become OLX. Uh, so I'd be curious to see how the next 12 month rollout, um, maybe with COVID, it will be shorter, maybe it will be longer. We'll wait and see. Uh, I don't think the brands are, uh, they're going to make any changes with brands because these are very strong brands in, in, the, in the local markets. They've invested, you know, a lot of money on this. Uh, yeah. th there's another thing that I did not really understand from, from the announcement. So the Bizzle actually, uh, or, I mean, uh, OLX 
Naspers, to be exact, acquired the rest of uh, 46 percent stake in, in the Bizzle in 2019 for uh, 190 million, which gives it a valuation of over 400 million dollars. And now they are giving this business away with Saudi, Pakistan and Lebanon to EMPG for something uh, around uh, a little over 200 million dollars. So that is also, you know, something that I did not, did not really understand. Maybe uh, there are things that they've not made public. Maybe uh, OLX still owns a part in each one of these entities, in addition to owning uh, the 39 percent stake in uh, EMPG. Uh, we don't know. Maybe we'll know when uh, uh, we, we, we get the annual report of uh, uh, the company that now operates uh, OLX Group. But yeah, that's about it uh, for today. Thank you so much, guys, for tuning in. And uh, this is, uh, like we said in the beginning, this is an experiment. Uh, would love your feedback. You can reach out to me at zubair at uh, we're, We will be experimenting with the days when we do this, uh, with, uh, with the time slots, and uh, even with the, with the content. You can reach me at uh, zubair at minabytes.com. And Rasha, if you would like to share your contact details and or, or anything else. Sure. I think uh, I'm glad we start, we ended on a positive note. Welcome to a new year court to the Middle East. Yeah. Um, definitely, we're looking forward to get your feedback. You can reach out to me on LinkedIn and or on Twitter at underscore underscore Russia. Um, with that spelling on the page, that's with a C. <laughs> and uh, you know, we're, we're really looking forward to it. As, as Zubair mentioned, this is an experiment. We're happy to get your feedback. And uh, we'll see you next week, hopefully. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot, guys. Thank you. See you next week. Bye. Bye.